Welcome to this international online Sunday service. Great people invited to this very holy place by the Spirit of the living God, where his friend will be speaking to us from the annals of heaven, from those secret chambers where mysteries are unraveled and unfolded, where we are enlightened by the word of God. It is a pleasure to be here. What a joy to be found in this very place, in this century, in this era, in this time. I'm Pastor Karamba, joined by Pastor Chikuni. In a few moments, we will be hailing the presence of God's very own friend, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa, man of God. Always good to be here, Pastor Karamba. Indeed. Amazing. Amazing time. The voice of God, past two Sundays, and here we are gathered about to hear the express and audible voice of God. Jesus once answered the fallen angel, and he said to him, men shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And we have the voice. We have the voice, one who echoes the heart of God. And, uh, well, for me, I would like to make reference to this special moment. I was privileged was one of the few that were privileged to go to Mzarabani at some point. Yes, and I was asking about our father. This is where? Yes. And something amazing took place there. And as I was asking, the people would say a lot of things, things that they didn't understand. But going back to scripture, you would see exactly some of the encounters that Moses had. And you begin to understand the nature of our father's calling. And one day I then asked my father, and he was highlighting that the Lord said to him, as I was with my servant Moses, so, so shall I be with you. And you begin to then understand that fatherhood, some are ordained fathers, some are called fathers. And having one of that nature, having a father, and having one, take away everything else, but leave the word of God. And you will understand that we have one who has specially, specially been called for us. Allow me to reiterate on what you said, man of God. This was 1996, and um, <laughs> the shed was on fire <laughs> in his homestead. And this is when the encounter took place. And he had men running with buckets of water, trying to douse out the fire, thinking that it was a fire getting there. And our father is relaxed, and um, he was woken up by the upheaval and the noise that was happening around him. And he was wondering, why are these men in such a friend? <laughs> and yet, he was coming out of a powerful spiritual experience. Our father added and said that at that time, he didn't know that that scripture was actually in the word of God, which draws us to understand the nature of the relationship that our father has had with God prior to even him understanding the logos that we read today. He's developed a relationship with he who has written the scriptures in such a way that we must understand that even this morning as we gather around him, we must understand the depth of the inspiration, that it is beyond understanding the letter, but it is his ability and his friendship with the spirit that giveth life, that then is transferred to us as we hear him speak. And that spirit then gives us, it gives life. You know, as I, as I was thinking about this, I then began to realize that the mysteries in the word, the nature of the revelation, the nature of the teachings, our father is one man that I can listen to the whole day. He can minister for three, four good hours. And I, I'm, I'm there, I'm listening with everything. Even my bones, my whole body is, is listening. And you can continue to listen attentively for such a long period of time. That only goes to tell you one thing. He has the God of the word. He has God. And what we are about to partake of, it is not coming from somebody who heard God. Thank God it is coming from a man who hears God. And we are sitting here and we are about to have whatever it is that God has prepared for us this moment. 
we begin to wonder constantly at God's immeasurable grace towards us, that we would be found in existence in this space of time in which he has allowed his friend to manifest in the physical at this time. It's, it's strange, man of God, because any number of other individuals could have been present at this time today. Um, the things our Father speaks about, the wisdom and inspiration and the voice of God that he gives to us and the voice of God that he actually is. Prophets have desired to hear the things that he speaks, even <sighs> heavenly beings are amazed when he speaks because the word of God is clear and it lets us know that the things contained within the physical Bible, there are volumes and volumes of many more other incidences that were not recorded in that yes, same yes, book. Yes, yes, yes. But to have such grace, to have a man in whom the Lord loves and trusts with such depth to the point where we get to hear about incidences even that have not been captured in the physical Bible. It is an unspeakable privilege, man of God. And um, being found here in this place, um, we, we are in debt to the Lord. And there is much that is going to be given to us and that has been given to us. And the best we can do as good stewards is to be able to take inventory of that which we've been given and to maximize on that. And he is a gift to us. He is the most valuable asset that the Lord has given us. And as such, we, we treasure his presence in our lives. It's one thing to hear from God. And I believe it's a choice to then allow yourself to give that experience to others like our father does. We are partakers of his experiences on the basis of him willing to allow us to partake of those experiences through him ministering to us through the word. And there is this thing about man that tries to push him away from appreciating man. But we sit here this morning and we thank God that our father is willing to say the heart of God to us this morning. That's a privilege, it's not a right. And we ought to understand that it's a privilege and not a right. We thank God for being with us. Indeed. Let's get into the service today. Here's the moment where we welcome our Father on this lovely Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. We ask that you pay maximum attention because we're about to receive the exceptional voice of God that brings out the Spirit out of Scripture. And from that, we are charged with life. Yes. Greetings, our Father. Greetings. Out of morning, Father. And blessings. <laughs> we receive. receive. Father, we thank you. We, we really thank you for giving yourself to us and sharing your experiences, um, sharing this powerful word with us. Yes. This morning we are ready. Yeah, you warned us three weeks back that uh, the voice of God, there's, uh, there's more that's coming now. And we, our hearts are open and we are ready to receive. Thank you, Father, for that. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for establishing your presence among us, your people and allowing us to partake. We are here as a fulfillment of your desires and your, your vision. Yes. yes. Father, every single person that is here today is here to receive and to hear what you're about to say. Yes, Lord. Yes. We have all realized that Without the word, we can't live. That's why we are here. We believe that as you speak, as you speak, this wonderful morning, Lord, even as you speak. Yes, Lord. Yes. We are expecting to see very strange occurrences. Mm. Yes, Lord. 
taking place. Transformations. Yes. Deliverances, miracles, and healings. We thank you for allowing us to partake and allowing us to be here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm very much excited and so much thrilled to be here again Thank you, and being able to share God's word with God's people. And there is nothing as pleasant as when brethren are dwelling together in peace. It is like the oil that flows from Aaron's head down through his beards and goes down to the skirts. It is a pleasant thing. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Missing you so much and we're glad that we are here. Thank you, Father. And God has a word. Thank you, Father. For his people. Thank you. The effectiveness of God's word. The effectiveness of God's word. We would like to delve into that. Find out what it is that God has invested in his word that, is, that makes it that effective. Mm. 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 The effectiveness of God's word. We really haven't done enough justice to, to God's word. In a size, investigating it and finding out what it is that God really meant when he called himself the word. The book of John, chapter number one, the writer starts by letting us know that in the beginning was the word. You know, I would want us to first look at uh, The book of Luke, chapter number four. Yes, Father. And verse number 32. Luke, chapter four, and verse number 32. Verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine. These were the people present as he was ministering. Those that got a chance to hear him speak. They became astonished. They were amazed at his level of ministration. They were astonished at what? His doctrine. At his doctrine. He had an amazing doctrine that he presented. Mm. For his word was with power. His word was with power. Yes, Father. This is what surprised the people. They discovered that his word had something in it. His word, his voice had something in it. And that something was power. You can never arrive at such a conclusion unless you have seen what that power can do. 
It wasn't just a feeling that they had as Jesus was speaking. There must have been something that requires power mm. Mm. that took place mm. Mm. as he was speaking at the time Jesus was speaking. Mm. 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 This is something beyond just a feeling. Mm. Mm. They witnessed, not just heard him speak, they witnessed mm. the power that took place that manifested at the time his word was coming out of his mouth. Mm. Mm. And they saw power. Mm. They witnessed the power and they said, there is something else beyond words. Now, there are so many things that take place when, when Jesus is speaking. I want people to understand. I want you people out there to understand the effectiveness of his word, what his word does. When it is heard and when it is understood, and when it is applied, mm -hmm. when it is believed, when you hear him speak and you believe, blessed are you for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken unto you. Blessed are you not only when you hear, but when you believe, for there shall be a performance that follows every word, a performance mm. of what was spoken. Mm. Mm. I would want our people today to understand what the Lord is saying. Mm. For after that, there shall be a performance. The effectiveness of God's word. I don't think there is anything as important as his word. Nothing is as important as his presence. And most Christians have noticed that they, they don't understand what really goes into the creation of the presence of God. Hmm. Because most people, they don't think that the, pre the presence of God ought to be created. Mm. They think it is entirely up to God for the presence of God to be present. But so many things are involved. I, I call it the creation because it, it requires a certain art. There is an art. Mm that draws the presence of God into an environment. The presence of God is not always created or invited by songs and prayers. But there is the right conversation that brings about the presence of God in a place. That makes our words also very, very important. Mm. What we say determines how long the presence of God will remain in a place. What we say. That, that is the reason why I said it is important when people are gathered together like today. And the reason why we are here is so that we hear. We have gathered for the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have gathered here for the word. Yes. God has so much trust and belief and confidence in his word. That if you look at what he did right from the beginning, where things that we can now see, were created. 
by God. In Hebrews 11, for the worlds were framed mm -hmm. by the word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of God. Yes, Father. The framing of the worlds, mm -hmm. the formation, where worlds were given a frame, a form, structures were created by his word. Mm -hmm. Through faith, through faith, we understand, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that, so that things which are seen, things that we see today, were, were not made by of things which do appear. How do you reach out and you get a hold of the invisible and with that you create? the visible. Only a God can do that. Mm -hmm. That takes God. But we understand little about this God. We have been made to believe over years that There was a time in the past when there was nothing. And then God made up his mind to create something. Mm. That is the way this God has been presented to us this far. There is an element of truth to that, but the truth is not comprehensive. It is not complete. If you start to investigate the effectiveness of God's word, you go as far as far. You keep on going. There never, there never was a time in the past when there was nothing. In as much as we would like to believe that God created everything out of nothing, we destroyed that belief last time when we took the word all the way back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything was created out of himself. Yes. So him being something, he can be creating everything out of nothing. It was out of something. Him being that something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if you'd want to think that there was nothing before God created something, you must also understand that for there to be nothing, it means there is something. <laughs> yes, because you are you are actually saying there was nothing. Nothing was. There was. It means nothing was there. And for nothing to have existed, it means there is a greater work that God did before he created something that we could then see. You, you can't have nothing and still have it. There can't be nothing and there is nothing. <laughs> Okay, I want people to understand the effectiveness of God's word. There was never a time when there was nothing. Because the moment you say that, means there was a time when even God himself wasn't present. Mm. 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 If there was a God who was there, 
forever. From eternity. It means there was, a, there was never a time when there was nothing. There was always something. But God then, for him to create something, that something had to be created out of something that we call nothing. Because we couldn't see it, perceive it, appreciate or even understand it. Like I told you before, if you are the creator of the earth, before you go on to create the earth, there is need for you to create space. Yes, Father. Because mm. 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 your earth is going to require space. space. So before you go on to create the earth, mm. you have to first create what? Space. Space. And yet some people call that space nothing because there is nothing there to see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Father. You don't want to find yourself with a globe that you have no place to put. So, when now God decided to release us from himself, out of himself, notice what he did. Before he did what he did, he said, he said, mm. Mm. let us make men. Mm. Yes, Father. Let us make men. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so apart from the creation that then took place where God took out of the dust of the ground and with that he formed the physical aspect of the man. It's, it's high time you start appreciating the work that preceded that. Something took place before he went on to touch the dust. The existence of a man had to be spoken. You must understand the effectiveness of his work. Mm, mm before he goes on to do, before he goes on to touch, he speaks. Let us make. And that declaration by the word of his mouth, that declaration is what goes out first and searches out the best material you know, when a porter is making a pot out of clay, there is so much that goes into the preparation of that clay before you can see the structure coming out. Mm, mm, mm. There is a lot of beating that the clay goes through. So this goes to show that even before God took the dust, the dust had to be subjected to the word of God. Mm, yes. mm, mm. It wasn't, in, that's why even today, scientists are not able to find out, even to get the finest powder of the earth, mm. and with that you create flesh. They can't. If they want to cover a certain wound over here, they have to reach out to another part of your body. Mm. And from there, they take a piece mm. of meat. Mm. Mm. They are yet to get to that finest dust of the earth. If it is still here, why is it that we still cannot find it? Mm. Mm. It is the same dust that we have, but he had to speak his word first. Mm -hmm. And the dust was processed by the word of God. It was after 
that the dust was processed, that God then took the processed dust, which was once subjected to the power of his word. Mm. Mm. And then with that, he was able to create flesh. Mm. Mm. His word is so effective. Mm. His word is so effective. You read from the book of Luke, chapter number four. Yes, Father. Verse number 32. I want you to keep on reading. Verse 33. Let me start from verse 32, Father, for continuity. Yes. And they were astonished at his doctrine, mm. for his word was with power. Yes. And in the synagogue. Right there in the synagogue. There was a man. Mm which had a spirit of an unclean devil. And this man, this is not his first time coming to church. Mm. Mm -hmm. But this is Jesus' first time hey, to come to this church. Yet all along these people have been meeting in his name. In his name, they were gathered there every single Sabbath, mm, mm, mm. calling upon his name and believing that his presence was present. Yet there was this man in the synagogue. And this man had a condition, he had a spirit that was unclean. Mm, mm. An unclean spirit mm. was in a man. <laughs> and this man was in the synagogue. Mm. And thank God today, Jesus brought in a different measure. He comes into this place because he realized that there was need for the word to be present in the synagogue. Mm. And there was no way before, otherwise this man wouldn't have been in that state if the word was really present. Okay. So here comes the word. Here comes Jesus. He's about to expose some falsehoods that have been taking place in this church because so many times the preacher has been declaring the presence of God is here. And yet there was this man in such a place and then nothing happened. And here comes Jesus. Today we are so sure that he is present mm. because mm. of what is about to happen now. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. And in the synagogue, mm. there was a man mm. which had a spirit of an unclean devil mm. and cried out with a loud voice, yeah. saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, mm. thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, mm. the Holy One of God. Mm. And Jesus rebuked him, mm. saying, The demon was rebuked for saying the right things. Mm. Jesus rebuked the evil spirit for preaching the right message, mm. telling people who Jesus was. I've told you this before. <laughs> there are people that he's not interested, he doesn't want them to market him. Mm. 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 Despite their willingness to preach good mm. about him, mm. he's busy rebuking mm. devils and clean spirits. Mm who are saying the right things. That's profound, Father. That's deep. We know who you are. And he never wanted them to reveal who he was. Jesus doesn't want the people around him to have demons as their source of revelations. Don't have demons revealing mysteries to you. Don't have demons revealing mysteries to you. Don't be made to understand divine mysteries by evil spirits because they are unclean. And that uncleanliness is transferable. 
when you spend time listening and hearing demons, there is a transference of uncleanness. Mm. 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 He rebuked an unclean spirit. He stopped it from letting people know who he was. Because power is in his word. Mm, mm, mm. There was power in his, that is his word. Wow. You just have to make sure that it is his, his word. word. Mm. <laughs> Not any other word. Mm. It has to be his word. Mm. Mm. And therein you find power. Mm. This man is speaking at a time when the word is supposed to speak. Mm. And Jesus rebuked him saying, mm. hold thy peace Be quiet, and mm. come out of him. <laughs> Wow. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him mm. and hurt him not. Hurt him not. Mm. You and remember? <laughs> hurt him not. Yes, well. They have a way of hurting their victims when they are departing. <laughs> Evil spirits. Wow. 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 And I've told you, most people right now are bleeding in their suffering yes, as a result of having gone through deliverance you can be had mm. in the process mm. by of spirit. losing <laughs> a demon mm. yes and they were all amazed again they were all amazed mm. yeah. and spake among themselves mm. saying mm. wow what a word what a what a word what a what a word <laughs> <laughs> What a word. What a word is this? Mm. 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 For with authority again and power again he commandeth the evil spirits and they come out. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. This is something. Indeed. This is something. Can I share something with you? Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, you remember when the centurion came to Jesus? Yes, Father. He had his servant at home, lying sick of the palsy. And he left his house and he left his office. He went to a place where he knew that healing was possible. Came to Jesus, a senior man. Who has a very outstanding rank in the military he comes to Jesus and is asking for a miracle he is not the one who is sick he has a servant who is at home who is supposed to be offering him service and yet he is sick The money that he has given to his servant is not sufficient to secure his healing. There are pharmacies and there are doctors out there. But the centurion decided to go to Jesus for a miracle. He's a servant. I've noticed that there are people who are
unqualified for the sharing of the testimony, yet they are qualified for the testimony. I've watched Jesus, I've watched God perform miracles. I've watched him do wonders to people who cannot go out there and explain what happened to them. They are not good at testifying. And yet they were qualified for the testimony. Mm, 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 mm. There are people who cannot testify. They are not good at narrating what God did for them. And yet still God did it for them. Why would God perform a miracle and he hands it over to somebody that he knows he's not capable of? testify is because God understands that testimonies do come in different forms. It's either you open your mouth and you declare what God did for you or he will send you back into your community and let the people see what he has done even when you can't explain it. There are people who are qualified for the testimony and yet they are unqualified to testify. Mm. Mm. So some of us, because we are spiritually enlightened, we look at people, we can see difference, we can see changes, mm. what God has done in as much as they are complaining <laughs> over little matters. We look at the bigger picture. Now you can look at a man and you can see a father. Mm, mm, mm. He's not happy over that, but some of us, we can see a testimony mm. from a non-testifying individual. He's, he cannot testify and yet we can still see that God has done a marvelous work mm. in his life. Mm, mm. There are people who can't share their testimony. They can't share. They just can't, cannot share their testimony. And yet we can see that God has just raised a man from the dead. When God is speaking, like in this case where he rebukes an evil spirit, and then a demon comes out and the man is free. Same place he used to attend every week. But today there was a different presence mm. of the same God. Yes. And a miracle was realized. Mm. When it is his word, when it is Jesus speaking, you must understand that there is an unclean spirit that is about to depart. If it is Jesus speaking to you today from this place, <laughs> be rest assured something is leaving your body and leaving your family and leaving your business. Anything unclean in your dealing Mm. It leaves as long as it is Jesus speaking. Mm. You, see? you see, you see, and the word was made flesh. The word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. Ah. You see, when we talk about the word becoming flesh, you mustn't limit that only to the incarnation of Christ, of the Christ. Where Jesus, who was God, had to be born physically. Mm, mm, mm. That, of course, is the biggest 
picture yes, of that text. Yes, sir. But it goes all the way. The God who was eternal, for God to be eternal, there is need for him to have existed in eternity. Eternity is not decided in the future. Eternity is not decided even in the beginning. Because once a thing begins, it is disqualified from being eternal. There shouldn't be any beginning to this God. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yet there was the beginning of what he created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was always something, because God is something. It has always been there. Mm. Right there, mm. where we had an eternal God. Eternity is decided in the endless past, not in the beginning. He's right there with his word. And at a certain moment, at a certain time, he decided to speak things into existence as if they never existed before. They were in another form of existence. Mm, mm. And what we consider to be creation now is another form of existence. The same thing that you see with the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is God, the Spirit putting on flesh and the word which was invisible mm -hmm. was made mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. To think that when God wanted his son who was the word mm -hmm. to be made, take note of that, mm -hmm. he wanted him to be made. Mm -hmm. He had to find a location an industry that would facilitate the making of the word into flesh. And Mary was singled out. A body was needed physically, a physical body, like the body that we have today. And God had to insert his word in the womb of a woman. And it was now up to the woman to convert the word Strong father. into flesh. It is our responsibility as physical Strong. beings to contain and to nature and to cultivate the invisible word. Strong father. And we make it flesh. Yes. That's God's investment. When the word is put into us, it is expected to come out of us at a certain point, walking mm. and doing wonders. Yes, Father. And the word was made flesh. This is not entirely up to God. Otherwise, Mary was not supposed to be involved in this. Her body was needed. We invest the word in a human body. And there it gets converted into flesh. Ha! Huh. When we talk about the word becoming flesh, you see, there is... We, you see, the word... The word for you to understand the word, there is need for the word to be, number one, interpreted. The interpretation of the word. The interpretation of the word covers a lot of things, which I cannot get into right now. The interpretation of the word, when the word is given, sometimes the meaning of the word is hidden. And for you to understand the meaning of the word, there is need for that word to be interpreted. 
by interpreting the word, you are giving a meaning, a definition to that word. And the word has to be subjected again to translation. Sometimes it is written in a language that is unknown to you. Then when somebody who can read that particular language converts it into a language that you understand, the word has been translated. So there is the interpretation, there is the translation of the word. But the translation of the word falls under two categories. Where the word in a foreign language written is now being written in a language that is known to you. It has been translated. But there's the deepest form of translation where the word gets converted. The translation of the word where the word becomes something else. And the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. You see, several other words, you require someone to interpret and to translate them for you. It gets to a point where, where when it is the word of God, the word of God has inherent power within itself to go out there and interpret itself by manifestations where the word spoken that you cannot understand the word itself can go on to interpret itself by becoming something that you know something that you can touch mm. then the centurion said yes, to Jesus I have a servant who is sick. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. To Jesus, it was an obvious case. If I'm to come into your house, oh, my brother, your servant recovers. Mm -hmm. Because he knows how to go about these things. He's not worried about the condition as long as you have come. Ha! Ah, and then this centurion took it to another level and he said, Ah, the centurion answered and said, mm. Lord, mm. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. He's looking at two different manifestations of the same word of God. <laughs> the flesh manifestation and the verbal word manifestation. Because when you have Jesus in the flesh, you have the word. And when you have Jesus speaking, you have the word, giving out a word. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Yes, because there is a word from the word, mm. by the word. Mm. When the word is speaking, that's something else. When the word then goes on to speak, that is something else. Mm. Mm. So this centurion is saying, I'm not worthy to have your physical appearance in my house. But there is a part of you that I would want you to dispatch. But speak. Speak. The word only. Only. And my servant shall, shall be healed. And when Jesus heard that, he marveled at that kind of faith. He said, oh, I've never seen this kind of faith, mm. not in Israel. Mm. Then he began to talk about many other things, how mm. strangers are going to come from the east and from the west, and they will sit with Isaac and Jacob and Abraham. Mm. Yet the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God are going to be cast out. He's not saying anything concerning the sick servant. Mm. 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 Take note of this. Now, I'm still waiting to hear what he's going to say in order for the servant to recover. Keep on reading. Let's see if you're going to come across that. Verily I say unto you, 
I have not found so great faith. Mm. No, not in Israel. Yes. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west. Yes. And shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yes. in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into darkness. Out of darkness, yes. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes. And Jesus said unto the centurion. Now he's back to the centurion. After having spent time talking to the rest of the people. He now said to the centurion, yes? Go thy way. Go thy way. Go thy way. way. Uh -huh. And as thou hast believed, as you have believed, so be it done unto thee. But he never said, seven, be healed. No, Father, he did not. He did not. The centurion wanted a word from the word. And Jesus, in healing this servant, he never said to the servant, be healed. Mm -hmm. He said to the centurion, go thy way. Mm -hmm. And as you have believed, <laughs> as you have believed so be it unto you what you have believed what you have conceived Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. go thy way yes and his servant was healed he said go thy way go thy way mm. and as thou hast believed Mm. So be it done unto thee. Mm. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Same hour. Child of God, hear this. How is it that you have a sick person in the house? And he's getting healed by the people who are not even present. We have two people who are facilitating healing and they are not present in the house where this servant is lying sick yet whatever they are doing there wherever these two people are that same hour there is going to be a confirmation right here in the world of a miracle taking place as a result of absent people doing something away from the condition. How do you explain that if you don't believe in the migration of the word of God from one place to another? If what I'm saying is limited only to this studio, why are we all here? Why are you watching me? You must understand what this centurion understood. He had so much faith in the intelligence of the word of God that the word of God is smart. He had faith that the word of God was mobile. It can be spoken. It can leave the word. The word spoken can leave the word in the flesh. And it is intelligent enough to locate without even giving it my home address. It's an intelligent force. It goes into my house. The word has a way of finding out who is not feeling well. The word. The word. 
it goes to the right servant who is not feeling well without being told. How, how, do, you, how do you administer the word at that magnitude? Most people don't understand the effectiveness of the word. You see, there are certain measures, certain levels of deliverance that if I'm, I start to explain to people here, most people will get confused. You see, like in the case where where you, there are demons that you cast and they come out. And you get to a level where you cast demons that are not even present. There are demons like that. Where you get to a point where by the use of the word, you cast out demons that are not even present. What do you mean? You, you, you speak from here because there are certain demons that would come occasionally. There are people who are being afflicted at certain times of the night. Mm -hmm. Certain attacks that come during certain seasons of the month. Demons, they just come, they attack and they depart. What they leave is chaos. What they leave are open wounds. When you get to a person, have you ever seen people that seem to be demon possessed? When you look at what they do, the way they speak, the way they walk, the way they behave, you can, without any spirit of discernment, you can see this man is possessed. Mm -hmm. Pray for him, no demon comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He is being visited by an evil spirit and he's made to do certain things. And by the time that you start praying for that person, the demon that afflicts him might not even be present at the mm. time that you are praying for mm. him. Mm. Take note of this. So how do you cast those demons that are not even present? You must understand the migration of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Where you speak from here and the word leaves you, it goes to wherever that demon is and the demon is commanded. Mm -hmm. And you are casting out demons that are already outside of a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People must understand this. Mm -hmm. There are people right now who are getting attacked. And when you try to help a person, he's so calm. And you're wondering what he's telling you, what he's going through. It's so clear that the man is under a demonic attack, mm. but you can't cast out that kind of a demon. Mm. Unless you know how to release a word and let it go out. And you give orders to demons that are not even present. Mm. 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 And you tell them to remain where they are from one place because the word is mobile. As long as you can hear the sound of my voice, you have a situation. Ups and downs. You go up, you go down. You go up, you go down. And you spend most of your time down you keep on falling every time. Even when you try to rise, you keep on falling. These are missiles that the devil launches against you. And he's not present at the time when the man of God is trying to help you. You see, having a centurion talk to Jesus, this is as good as having someone praying for you mm. to God. That's exactly what is happening. Mm, wow. It's mm. someone praying to God for your healing. Mm. And then God speaks a word. Mm. He tells me to go my way. And then you realize that it wasn't him who said, may your servant be healed. Mm. It was the centurion who spoke of the healing. It was the centurion who spoke of the healing. 
it was the centurion. If you can speak it, if it is, don't, don't wait for God to say it. It wasn't Jesus who said, be healed. It was the centurion mm. who said, you, my, my servant can be healed if you speak a word. Mm. Healing came out of the mouth of the, of the centurion, hey. of the victim. Wow, wow, wow. Speak what you want to see happening. The devil has since stopped for a very long time fighting against <laughs> prayers from God's people. If the devil can only get you to speak against your own prayer, he allows you to pray for 10 hours. If he can only get you to speak against what you've prayed for. It's no longer the devil fighting your prayers. It is your conversations mm, mm, mm. that then begins to undermine what you've been saying in prayer. If he can get you to say things that are contrary and not consistent with what you have been saying in prayer, that's it. That's it. It wasn't Jesus who said your servant is healed. Healing came out of the mouth of the victim. Mm. He spoke mm. and that word became flesh. There are things that we want to see happening in our lives and we're just waiting for God to say it. That God has given you the power to speak. And when you speak the word, he helps you, God himself helps you transport that word that you have spoken to the rightful location. What is it that you want God to do for you today? What is it that you want God to say? The fact that you know already mm. what you want mm. him to say, mm. go mm. ahead and say it. Mm. Is it healing that you want? You have to say. Is it a miracle that you want? Is there any way that you want God to intervene in your matter? Instead of you waiting for him to say that, go ahead and say what you want God to say. All that God is going to say to you is go thy way. And you see the materialization of the spoken word. In the presence of Jesus, say what you want to see happening. In the presence, as long as you are present and Jesus is present, in that presence of Jesus, speak a word. Speak a word. When you're telling Jesus to speak a word, you mustn't forget that you're also speaking a word. Mm. When you speak a word, the word that has been made flesh helps you transport what you've said. Now we have received a word. Jesus is in us, the word. Right now, as you are listening to me, you are hearing him speak. Now that you have conceived, you are now pregnant mm. with the word. Mm. Mm. What will come out is something tangible. A baby is going to be born. When that baby entered into the womb of Mary, it wasn't a material thing. A word was spoken by the angel of the Lord. A word. And then she conceived the word. The word. Mm, mm, mm. And after nine months, what came out was flesh. You will have material things in your life and in your house that were never material before. Another form of manifestation. Things that we see happening today, things that we can interact, that we can touch, were once in another form. So what we are calling creation today is a translation of objects that were once in existence in a form that is not usable to us. So the word that God has given to you right now, the word that you are receiving, it's a material. It is the next property that you are going to have. Mm, 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 mm. 
what you speak you will eventually touch what you speak you will eventually carry yes yes Child of God, believe what I'm telling you right here and right now. Yes. yes. If you want your world to be framed and to be restored and to be renovated, resort to the word. Speak his word. Never contradict what he said yes. in his written scriptures, in his written word. Don't contradict that. God is faithful yesterday, today and forever. He's committed. Once he has given you a promise, as long as that word was from God, as long as God gave you, as long as that dream was from the Lord, as long as the revelation was from the Lord, as long as the desire that you have is birthed by God in you to desire to become better. Hear me, child of God. Go thy way and there shall be a performance mm. of those words spoken to you. Mm. You have to believe him. You have to believe Jesus. You have to believe Jesus. Of all the people that have spoken into your life, I would rather believe Jesus. Believe what he say. This cannot be the end of you. An intelligent God cannot create a person to live a life like that and then it ends like that. He has a better plan for you. There must be something greater than this. Go thy way and let it be done unto you as you have not just believed, but as you have spoken. As you have spoken. It was what he said that then happened. Jesus did not raise his hands and say, let's close our eyes. And then he began to pray. He sent him away before he spoke. The word, the invisible, is becoming flesh in your life from this day. The next time you do an inventory of what you have, count the word. Don't leave it out of the things that you have, the word being the source of everything, it means you have everything. As long as you can speak it out, declare it out of your mouth, make a declaration today over your children that these, as long as God lives, because you know he's never going to die, they shall never beg for bread. My children will never be homeless. Speak a word when that word is spoken. Guess what? God, the God that you wanted to speak on your behalf, all that he's going to say is, go thy way and let it be done unto you as you have believed. How do you know that you have believed it? You declare it. You declare what you believe. You declare it. What you believe, declare it. What you believe, declare it. What you want to see happening, declare it. Right now, miracles are happening. Jesus walks into Simon's house and Simon's wife's mother was sick. She had fever. Written in two places, yet in both places, at one point, Jesus stretched his head and touched the mother and she recovered. Mm. In another place, Jesus spoke a word and she recovered. Mm. 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 In both instances, you are seeing her coming into contact with the word. Hey. Hey. Either you hear the word, you recover, or you touch the word, you recover. When you're touched by the word, you feel a sensation, it is the word touching the sick. Mm. When the word touches you, you are touched by God. And fever goes away. How do you control fever? Pastors, this is an amazing observation. To think that the word of God 
can regulate your stress hormones, depression. When, when you are under fatigue, when you are so much exhausted and the word comes close to you and it touches you, how do you make the fever to vanish? By touching the victim. When the word touches you, even the flow of your blood in your system gets regulated by the word of God. So when the word touches you, it doesn't matter the condition that you are in right now. They might have said all sorts of things as a result of their diagnosis, but hear me. When the word touches you, let the word touch you wherever you are. When the word touches you, yes. when the word of Jesus touches you, yes. <laughs> yes. fever goes away. Yes. Fever goes away. And the Bible says immediately she stood up and began to save them. Mm -hmm. Immediate, not the following day, immediately. You are recovering from your condition immediately. Straight away. Straight away. Your address is changing. Your location is changing. Every limitation in your life is, is removed. Immediately as you are hearing God's word, even as you are declaring, Spend the rest of the day today declaring positive things that you would want to see happen in your life. And as you go thy way, your goings shall be blessed and your coming in shall be blessed. You are a son of the Most High God. You are not in this battle to be defeated. You belong to your winning team. Child of God, this is the way that I have for you today. Believe what I've told you because I got it from the most reliable source. God is not a man. He cannot lie. Whatever promise he gives you, he will see to it that it comes to pass. Just keep on holding on to your belief in his word. Don't give up because God himself is not giving up on you. Trust him because he has trusted you. He trusts you that even in the flesh, if only you can conceive his word, the way Mary conceived it. Very soon, we'll be congratulating you of a baby that yes. came as a result of the word. Yes. We'll have a baby crying, touching a baby yes. as a result of the word that mm. is not even visible. Mm. We are here as children of God in the flesh. I'm now telling you at the end of this sermon, one of our major responsibilities on the earth is to multiply visible things. Not as spirits. God is trusting us with the word because we have the flesh. Once it is in us, it gets converted and it becomes flesh. Something else that God wants to see on the earth, we are here to say to it that it is created. Let us conceive the word. Let us nature the word, cultivate it until it becomes something tangible. You are here to see what God can do. You've heard of miracles and testimonies from other people. Now it is your turn. Now it is your time. I'm speaking this from the throne room of God. I know the men that I serve that he is not even a man. The personality that has empowered me to reach out to you and to give you his word. I trust him. I trust him more than I trust myself. When he speaks, you will bring it to pass. Child of God, you are covered. You are protected and you are surrounded. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. yes, yes. From today yes. going forward, I'm expecting your possessions mm. to start multiplying. Mm. As the word gets converted into flesh, yes. multiplication is starting today. 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 In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Pastors. Thank you. What more can we say? Who draws life out of the world like this and not have God? The tangibility of the world, the materialization of the world, bringing out the intricacies of the miracles that Jesus performed in this way. Father, thank you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Father. You're welcome. I would like to encourage you now to send us your testimonies on our feedback line, send us videos and audios. We know that the hand of God is touching you in a special way this morning. Until next time. Shalom.